The Citadel, A.J. Cronin. Andrew reached forward. By the light of the under-manager's lamp thrust across his shoulder, he ran his hands over the injured man. The whole of Bevan's body was free except his left forearm, which lay beneath the fall. So pressed and mangled under the enormous weight of rock, it held him immovably a prisoner. Andrew saw instantly that the only way to free Bevan was to amputate the forearm, and Bevan, straining his pain-tormented eyes, read that decision the moment it was made. "'Go on then, Doctor,' he muttered. "'Only get me out of here quick.' "'Don't worry, Sam,' Andrew said. "'I'm going to send you to sleep now. "'When you wake up, you'll be in bed.' Stretched flat in a puddle of muck under the two-foot roof, he slipped off his coat, folded it, and slipped it under Bevan's head. He rolled up his sleeves and asked for his bag. The under-manager handed forward the bag, and as he did so he whispered in Andrew's ear, For God's sake, hurry, Doctor. We'll have this roof down on us before we know where we are. Andrew opened the bag. Immediately he smelt the reek of chloroform. Almost before he thrust his hand into the dark interior and felt the jagged edge of broken glass, he knew what had occurred. Frank Davis, in his haste to reach the mine, had dropped the bag. The chloroform bottle was broken, its contents irretrievably spilled. A shiver passed over Andrew. He had no time to send up to the surface, and he had no anaesthetic.